Over the last two years, I've been teaching myself Swedish, and one of the ways I've been trying to get my ear attuned to the sounds of Swedish is by watching a lot of Swedish movies and TV shows. In this video, I'm going to take you through five of my favourite TV shows, which are all available to watch on Netflix UK and Ireland. First up is a show called Bonus Family or Bonus Familien in Swedish. It is set in Stockholm and it is about a couple who are both recently divorced and they have kids from their previous marriages. Now they've gotten together and the drama is all about how they're blending their new families together with their children from both previous marriages and then a new kid that they're gonna have themselves. I think that might be in a later season, Ooh, spoiler. I like it because it's quite a cozy show. The people speak quite slowly so you can get used to all the Swedish sounds as well. It's quite low stakes drama, it's like, everyday kind of living in Stockholm. There's about four, I think there's four seasons and a movie has just come out as well in Sweden. So I have to wait until that comes onto Netflix because I don't think my Swedish is good enough to watch it without English subtitles just yet. Like it might not be for everyone because not a lot happens essentially. But yeah, it's quite nice if you want like a background show that's kind of comfort viewing. I would probably put it in the same kind of category as something like Gilmore Girls where it's like something nice and homey and you know, not too high stakes, so you never feel too anxious or anything. So <laughs> it's a um, good show from that end. So that's Bonus Family. So next up is a more serious drama series called Quicksand or Storst of Alts. In Swedish, I probably said that wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> it is a teen crime drama and it opens at a school shooting has just happened and there's only one survivor left. And the whole story follows this character, Maya, who was the only one left alive. And it's never questioned whether or not she did the crime or not throughout the entire show it's more like why she did it and what was her level of complicity in it so most of the show is told through flashback but we also get the modern perspective of how she how the trial is going it's a really compelling show i really enjoyed it it gives you a great look into how very wealthy teenagers live in modern day stockholm the characters are all really strong maya is our, is our protagonist as i said and then there's her boyfriend who's this typical kind of bad boy very messed up guy sebastian and how he's involved in everything as well the, the story is just really good. I was hooked from the beginning to the end. You were trying to work out like how did this happen? From everything that you're showing, you're like why would Maya end up in this school shooting? And how was she involved? And how did it all happen when it really looks like it would be her boyfriend rather than her? If you think it wouldn't be for you because it's a teen drama, I would say uh, take another look. It's definitely like suitable for adults as well. They're not going to be bored and it kind of falls into that category as well of Nordic noir which has become so popular around the world. So I would definitely give this one a go if you're looking for a strong drama that's you know it's not it's not super long either it's six episodes so yeah check it out third tv show on the list is a show called love and anarchy or charlotte oak anarchy again i'm sorry if i pronounced that incorrectly uh, it's a comedy or, or a sort of comedy drama series on netflix it is about a woman called sophie who's in her late 30s and she's just gone into work as a consultant in this publishing house and they've asked her to kind of modernize it essentially outside in her personal life she's a bit like stuck in a rut kind of bored with life and while she's working in this new office she and this young guy who's in his like early 20s start this affair and it starts off based on these like they start daring each other to do these little dares that get progressively more and more wild and having bigger and bigger consequences so a lot of the comedy comes from the chemistry that these two actors have of like bouncing off each other they, they work really well on screen and uh, the dares are really funny and everything kind of loses control and like that's where a lot of the comedy comes from there are two seasons the second season in my opinion probably shouldn't have been made because it definitely felt like one of those shows where it should have been a one and done in the first season. And the second season, not that it's bad, but it's just a little bit, uh, it, it's lost the magic of the first one. But again, I would still probably watch a third season if it came out. It's a nice lighthearted show. It's a great one again for getting your ear attuned to the ways people speak in Sweden. It's more kind of fast paced than for instance, bonus familiar, like the way they speak, it's kind of, it's zip 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 the way they speak and aside from the main the main drama at the center of the story there's also some good side plots as well so i would definitely recommend this one if you're looking for like an easy breezy show that's like half an hour long each episode so give it a try love and anarchy so the next one i have on my list is another teen show don't let the the moniker again teen throw you off although this one is definitely a lot more teenage than the likes of quicksand for instance it's called young royals and it follows a fictionalized version of the crown prince of sweden who in this in this show he's in a very posh boarding school and he starts a relationship with another boy in his class and it's basically all about the the strife and the conflict that comes with being a crown prince being gay and 
then also the class differences of his love interest and how they navigate that. It's got a lot of your typical sort of teen tropes, but I like the way that they're played. It's got like quite a fresh take, particularly in the way that they all seem like real teenagers. Like they all look teenage, like teenagers. They don't look like 25 year olds playing 17 year olds. They're all spotty and they have realistic kind of body shapes and sizes and differences. They also have characters who are quite different from your usual stereotypical characters. So for instance, Simone, who is Prince Wilhelm's love interest. His sister is a big character in the show. She is Asperger's and that's not shown as something, you know, like her whole personality. It's just like one part of who she is and she is a very well-drawn, well-developed character, which I liked. There are a few bits that are a bit, that felt a bit too teenage for me that I was a bit bored with. But then again, I am a 31 year old woman, so gonna happen <laughs> but overall it's an enjoyable show there's been two seasons so far uh, the second one just came out and it's been really successful so far I would definitely recommend checking it out it's got a really cool soundtrack and I just think it's doing better like it's producing better content compared to a lot of American teen shows that are out at the moment so um, yeah give it a try young royals have you ever heard of the term Stockholm Syndrome? Well, this show, Clark, is based on the guy who gave rise to the term. It is about the life of Clark Olofsson, who is a notorious Swedish bank robber, and it follows his life from the 40s when he was born right up into the late 1980s. It's all told through uh, Clark's perspective, and it's extremely madcap, farcical, slapstick kind of humor. Everything's kind of crazy and it's very entertaining to watch. Clark, who is pay played by Bill Skarsgård, is really great in the, in the main role. He's very charismatic and he's got great comedic timing and it's very enjoyable to watch, as I said. My favorite thing about it probably was his catchphrase, which is which translates literally to shit yourself or shit on yourself. And he kind of throws it around at everyone he meets as kind of a, a greeting or a parting phrase, which was very entertaining. My only kind of criticism of the show would be after you get to the central, the most, you know, the famous bank robbery, the one that made him a famous criminal. After that, the show loses steam a little bit and it goes on for maybe an episode or two, a bit too long, but it, there's, it's still very well put together. All of the side characters that you meet throughout the show, I mean, they're all kind of like caricatures, but in the best way possible. I hadn't seen any marketing or advertising about this show in the run up to it or around it and I think that's a shame because it's uh, it's really good and I think it would do quite well outside of Sweden again. I'm not I'm not even sure how well it has done in Sweden, but it's definitely a star vehicle for Bill Skarsgård and I would recommend it check it out. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed these recommendations. If you have any TV shows that you think I should definitely check out, please let me know down in the comments. I might do a video as well on the Swedish movies I've been watching, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. And if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. And if you could like and subscribe and maybe leave a comment as well, I would be really grateful because it really helps with the YouTube algorithm and all the rest of it. And um, I would love to grow my little baby channel. So um, yeah, thanks so much and see you guys next time. Bye.